Hello, and welcome to an overview of the PDS Woodsmill Studio StoreSync. StoreSync is a flexible data synchronization tool able to move data between Woodsmill servers, historians, files on disk, databases, and other data sources. StoreSync answers a variety of data movement and ETL problems, such as needing to back up your entire Woodsmill system for disaster recovery, or getting a real-time stream of Woodsmill data moved across systems. Built with high availability and scalability in mind, StoreSync can be ran as a distributed application on multiple machines while assuring concurrency and statefulness. Its modular design allows for rapid design and delivery of new sources and syncs. Most of the interaction with the service is handled through the Configuration Manager UI, shown here on the left, but can be scripted using the console processor to manually start jobs. StoreSync instances are designed to be ran as Windows services, as shown here. For this demonstration, I will be running it in a console mode to show the application working through each transfer. Let's go ahead and start that up. Now that the service has been started, let's open a configuration in the Configuration Manager. By clicking Store Sync, Open. And select a configuration. As you can see here, we have a variety of connections, some with ML, some file. And below, we have several data transfer templates defined. Let's focus on this 131 to 141 template. By double clicking it, it brings up the settings for it. Let's go ahead and enable it. Configuration Manager includes the same functionality of desktop with the WITSML and ETP browsers. Let's use the WITSML browser to show that there are no wells on my local system. I've already connected to my local WITSML store. To verify there are no wells, I will right click, refresh all, and there we go. Let's go back to the store sync configuration. To save, hold Control and click S. StoreSync has detected the change and is currently processing the template. Transfers can be configured to wait on other transfers before starting. This is helpful for log objects as they need a well and well bore. Also note that this transfer was a one-time job, so it's only going to run once and then never again. Alright, it looks like the job is completed. Let's go check in the WITSML browser to see which data was copied over. Like before, we'll right click, refresh all, and we can see we now have a new well, demo well. Let's go find that log object. There we go. By right clicking, get details, return elements all, this will fetch the header and the data portion of the log. If the response was too large, it'll be saved to disk, but we can always go to the data tab to view the data from the log. Next, let's start a continuous stream of Witsmo 1 for 1 to 1 for 1. We'll go back to the Store Sync Configuration tab and select the 1 for 1 to 1 for 1 transfer. Let's enable it. Before saving, let's learn a bit more about this transfer. By going to the Transfer Settings tab, let's go down to the 1 for 1 to 1 for 1 death log transfer. Here we can see that it will be synchronized on an interval of every 10 seconds. To get information on which log is going to be transferred, go to the Data Source tab. As you can see, from the Azure Dev Test, we'll be pulling this depth log. To confirm, we can use the Select Source URI button to bring up the hierarchy. It will automatically drill down to the currently selected URI. We can expand it to see which channels it has as well as look at the header information to see what it has data for. For here, we have data from 0 to 131.9 feet. Let's go ahead and select this log. You can also configure which channels would be synchronized over by clicking on the Mappings tab. Here we can see this curve ACTC. We're going to be renaming to Custom ACTC, as well as we're going to be synchronizing it again to a duplicate channel. Let's go back to the Job Settings tab and save this configuration. 
by holding Control and clicking S, we can see SourceSync detect the change and start to synchronize it. Let's go back to the WITSML browser to see what was synchronized over. By right-clicking, refresh all, we see we have a new well, PDS Desktop Demo. Let's go find that depth log we selected. Let's expand it to see if we have our new curves. Ah, we have our custom ACTC as well as the duplicate ACTC. Let's get data for this log. And here we can see our custom ACTC and our duplicate ACTC values match. Next, let's convert WITSML 1 for 1 to a flat WITSML 2.0 XML file. Going back to the configuration tab, we can see the third template is 1 for 1 to 2 file, and it's one time. Let's go ahead and enable this one. Before saving, let's go to the folder it's going to be written to to make sure nothing's there. Okay, looks good. And now we'll save it. Change was detected, and it looks like it's going. Let's go to the folder to see if anything's written yet. Okay, we have a new transform folder. Let's open that. And two XML files were written. Let's open up this well one. Lastly, we're going to be reading from a flat WITSML 1 for 1 file and writing to a 2.0 WITSML file. This could be helpful if you have a lot of wells backed up to disk and you want them upgraded to 2.0. Let's go back to the Configuration Manager. After enabling, let's save the configuration. Now let's go to the folder it's going to be written to. We now have three new XML files. Let's look at this log one. That's all for now for the PDS WITSML Studio Store Sync. Thanks for watching. Please hit the thumbs up if you like what you've seen, and subscribe to receive updates as we publish new videos on our other products.